We like nonfiction. We like nonfiction and we live in fictitious times. We live in a time where we have fictitious ele election results that elects a fictitious president. We, we live in a time where we have a man sending us to war for fictitious reasons. At the 2003 Oscars, director Michael Moore called out the most powerful man in the world, Republican President George W. Bush, after his announcement that the U.S. was invading Iraq. Whether it's the fictition of duct tape or the fictitious of orange alerts, we are against this war, Mr. Bush. Shame on you, Mr. Bush. Shame on you. And any time you've got the Pope and the Dixie Chicks against you, your time is up. It was a stunning moment as the room filled with boos. Moore would win his first ever Academy Award for his documentary Bowling for Columbine, a stunning film on the school shooting massacre in Colorado. Weapons of mass destruction have been found in Iraq. After our politicians deceived the public. I take the threat very seriously. I take the fact that he develops weapons of mass destruction. And ran with this line over and over again to the American people. I don't know of a worse lie one could tell other than a, the, 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 a lie to take a country to war. Moore spoke out at the Oscars and beyond. Mr. Bush, when are you going to apologize for the million Iraqis that are dead because you lied? You lied about weapons of mass destruction. You lied about connections to 9 11. You lied about Iraq being dead. You sent me to Iraq in 2003. My friends are dead. As did veteran. Mike Preisner. We know that Saddam Hussein is determined to keep his weapons of mass destruction. Saddam Hussein will continue to increase his capacity to wage biological and chemical warfare. Personally, I'd like to see a perp walk coming out of the West Wing of the White House. Do you think they're guilty of uh, war crimes? Absolutely. Name them. Lying to go to war. <laughs> Start with that one. Right now, as we speak here live on CNN, there's an alternate reality taking place on another network. And they're over there today uh, saying how great it is, Iraq's free. You mean false? It's, uh, yes, I, I don't really want to, you know, disparage that. Well, Donald me. Rumsfeld, let me read a tweet uh, from Donald Rumsfeld. Yeah, okay. Ten years ago began the long, difficult work of liberating 25 million Iraqis. All who played a role in history deserve our respect yeah. and appreciation. Well, uh, he's a war criminal, as far as I'm concerned. Um, uh, I don't understand why he, Bush, Cheney, uh, Wolfowitz are still walking the streets. You know, they can get away. Their whole, the, the way they're trying to revise history now is by saying, well, it was a mistake or we were given bad information. You know, if let's say uh, somebody sent a tweet to us right now or sent me an email that said, um, um, Goldman Sachs downtown right now in their basement, they have kidnapped children and they're holding them there. And I then tell the police this. Um, what will happen to me when they go down to Goldman Sachs and find out that there's actually no kids kidnapped mm -hmm. in, in the basement of Goldman Sachs? Uh, and you, of course, you would think I would want to go after Goldman Sachs as Bush wanted to go after Saddam. But, but I think I'd be arrested. I think I'd be arrested if I produced false information. And to just say it's a mistake, you know, it, it's if, if, uh, if somebody ran over your four-year-old, they get out of the car and they go, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> mistake. We cannot overstate how ballsy of a position this was to take at the time. This was a time, after all, when patriotism was at its peak, including the cover-up of former NFL player turned soldier Pat Tillman's death in the Middle East. According to the Watson Institute, there have been between 280,771 and 315,190 Iraqi civilians killed by direct violence since the U.S. invasion. The number of civilians killed by direct and indirect war violence is unknown but likely much higher. Life-threatening damage to Iraqi healthcare and other infrastructure has not been repaired. Civilians are still dying in significant numbers. Very shame the President of the United States is from Texas. For more and many, an old quote rings true. Your booze mean nothing. I've seen what makes you cheer. Moore would continue fighting against the ills of our country, from war to health care and gun violence. The NRA has fought and kept Congress from approving any money to study why we have this epidemic. It is an epidemic. Mm. No other countries like this. They're not better than us. Canadians have the same 23 chromosomes in every cell that we have. Why don't they shoot each other at the rate that we shoot each other? They have a lot of guns, by the way. It's a big a country of hunters. So there are guns. They don't kill each other. It should, be, it should have been studied a long time ago. 
you know, and, and sometimes it's the simplest things. I, because first, first of all, with these mass shootings in schools, they don't happen in the inner cities, do they? They don't happen in the inner city schools. They happen in rural and suburban communities, by and large. When the, when the night that they got, the gunman was atop the hotel in Las Vegas, firing essentially machine gun fire on a crowd of 20,000 people, uh, CNN broke in. I was watching. Uh, um, okay, I was watching Anthony Bourdain. You know, I, sometimes I, I, you know, I I wish I cooked, but I don't, so I can you know, watch it on TV. Having said that. CNN breaks in, breaking news. Uh, we believe there's a gunman uh, on one of the top floors of the hotel. And I thought, first thought was, how do you know it's a man? Why'd you say gunman? Of course, I'm being facetious. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's a gunman. There, we already know, without finding out who's doing this, no woman is up there with a machine gun spraying bullets on a crowd of 20,000 people. I'd like to study that. I'd like to find out why that is, because clearly we are safe from 51% of the population. The irony, of course, is the booze and music drowned out the rest of his speech, which he read years later. Now, the microphone is lowering into the stage. They've struck up a band. The stage manager is giving me the heave ho, and I'm bending down to the microphone. And anytime you've got the Pope and the Dixie Chicks against you, your time is up. This was the end of me, and they hauled me off the stage. So now, here for the first time ever is the rest of my Oscar acceptance speech. So before I close, I want to say a few words about nonfiction and how to use it as a cure for the many lies we are being told and as a nonviolent weapon of revolution and change. I have read over the years that my first movie, Roger and Me, kicked open the doors for documentary films, the first documentary to be widely distributed to the shopping mall cinemas and multiplexes of America. The Academy, though, has not let me in as a member for 13 long years, not until just last month. I had heard all the reasons why Roger and Me, it's not a documentary. Documentaries are not supposed to be entertainment. You're using your frivolous humor and it lessens the seriousness and the impact of what you're trying to say, etc, etc. Those of us from the now dead factory towns of the Rust Belt who, like me, have just a high school education. I barely made it out my senior year. I flunked English and I flunked math, but I got a D in French. We from the working class immediately know the class-based tone of those who speak to us, those who went to the finer schools or even any school at all. I encourage everyone watching at home tonight in the Gary Indianas of America, in the Camden, New Jerseys, in the San Ysidros, the East St. Louis, and yes, the Flint's and the Detroits and the Pontiacs and the Dearborns to pick up a camera and fight the power. Make your voice heard and stop this senseless war. Thank you and good night. I'm continually amazed at those over the years who go up in rooms such as these in front of some of the most powerful people in their industry and use their platform for the greater good. And in addition, when you see the Michael Moores of the world, Adam Yauks of the world go up there at certain award shows, when they are given the opportunity in their speech and they shed light on an atrocity we all know is taking place and are blind to and immune to it and numb. That says something about that person. That says they have the courage to do something that they will get crucified for, but history will show they were on the right side. So shout out to Michael Moore and shout out to Jonathan Glazer. If there are any stories we missed, if there are any that you would like to submit, get at me and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, DMs are open. And please, if you can support the network, go to TY dot com slash join.